Hello everyone, Foxy here, and welcome to Mostly Mental. Today, I'd like to continue my series on knot theory with a look at prime knots. For a number theorist, the building blocks of numbers are the primes. Every number can be broken down into its prime factors. A lot of the properties of numbers we care about, like divisibility or sums of factors, are easiest to study for prime numbers. And once we understand how the primes behave, it's relatively simple to combine them to understand numbers more generally. For a knot theorist, prime knots serve the same function. Every knot can be broken down into its prime components. Prime knots are often well-behaved with respect to knot invariants, so they're easier to study. And most invariants combine nicely when we consider their primes, which lets us understand knots more generally. So today, I'd like to talk about prime knots. Prime numbers are most meaningful when we have a way to combine them, namely multiplication. And similarly, before we can talk about prime knots, we first need a way to combine knots. We'll define the connected sum of two knots to be what we get when we cut both knots open and stick the loose ends together, matching the directions. That might seem a bit poorly defined. I mean, shouldn't it matter where we attach them? Like, if I stick this trefoil onto this figure 8 at the red point, won't I get something different than if I stick it on at the blue point? Fortunately, it turns out, no. We'll always get the same sum, regardless of where the two knots are joined. To see why, stick the trefoil on at the red point, like so. And then shrink that trefoil down until it's really small relative to the structure of the figure 8. Then we can just slide it along the strand, like a bead on a string, until we get it to the right place. And finally, we can stretch it back out to its full size. With this same logic, we can see that for any two knots, the sum doesn't depend on where the knots are joined. Now that we know how to add knots, what does it mean for a knot to be prime? Once again, we can look to the prime numbers for inspiration. What does it mean for a number to be prime? Well, 5 is prime, since the only way to write it as the product of whole numbers is 5 times 1. So one of the factors is itself, and the other is 1. The only factorization is trivial. On the other hand, 6 is not prime. It's composite. Sure, it can be written as 6 times 1. It has a trivial factorization but it can also be written as 2 times 3. That is, it can be broken down into two smaller pieces. By analogy, let's look at how a knot can be expressed as a connected sum. For instance, the figure 8 can only be written as the sum of a figure 8 and an unknot, so it only has a trivial decomposition. But a square knot is the sum of two trefoils it can be decomposed into two simpler knots. So it would make sense to call the figure 8 prime and the square knot composite. And that's exactly how we'll define them. We'll say that a knot is prime if it can only be written as the sum of itself and the unknot, and it's composite if it's the sum of two simpler knots. How can we check if a knot is prime or composite? Well, what characteristic features can we find in the sum of two knots? Looking at our definition, when we add knots, we get two essentially separate parts connected by a pair of parallel strands going in opposite directions. So if a knot is composite, it will have that structure somewhere in it, and if it's prime, it won't. How do we find that structure? Well, notice that when the parts are cleanly separated like this, we can draw a ball around one of them. Bearing in mind we're topologists, so ball is a very flexible term. And there's only one strand going into the ball and one coming out. 
Of course, once we have our sum, we can play with our string to make it a tangled mess. But the ball acts like a rubber coating. It stretches and deforms along with the knot, and it keeps the inside separate from the outside. So we'll always have a definite boundary between the two parts, with a pair of strands going in and out. So to check if a knot is prime, we can look at every pair of strands and see if we can draw a ball around everything to one side. If we can, the knot is composite, and if we can't, the knot is prime. Why do we care so much about primes anyway? With prime numbers, we care because a lot of interesting arithmetic properties play nicely with primes and multiplication. For instance, 144 is 2 to the 4th times 3 squared, which is 16 times 9. And if we count the divisors, 144 has 15 of them, 16 has 5, and 9 has 3. So the number of divisors of 144 is the product of the divisors of 16 and the divisors of 9. Similarly, it turns out most of the interesting knot invariants play nicely with prime knots and connected sums. For example, let's look at three colorings. As a reminder, those are the colorings of a knot with three colors so that every crossing has either all three colors around it or only one. Say we have two knots, like so. And we know how many ways there are to color each of them separately. Call those x and y. How many ways are there to color their connected sum? Well, suppose we have a coloring of this knot and a coloring of this one. And these are independent colorings, so we can do this in x, y ways. Now let's take some strand on each of them and cut it. It would be nice if we could just stitch these loose ends together and have a valid coloring, since then we would have a clear correspondence between colorings of the individual knots and colorings of the sum. But the trouble is, these strands might be different colors. Not to worry, though, there's a simple fix. Just lay a new strand across the gap. Since these are red and these are blue, this new strand must be green. And now there are only two loose ends and they're the same color, so we can connect them. And you can check that this is a reversible process, so there are still XY ways to color this. But notice that this loop isn't actually attached to anything behind it. So we can just pull it off to the side and get something like this. And now we have two independent knots. The unknot has three colorings, all red, all green, and all blue, and the connected sum, by assumption, has z. So we have three z colorings for this configuration. And we said that's the same as the colorings over here, so we get that xy equals 3z. And solving, we get z is xy over 3. So if we have a knot, we can count the colorings by breaking the knot down into its primes, counting the colorings for each of them, and then using this formula to combine the result. And we find similar behavior for a lot of knot invariants. Let's take a look at one last example. Say we have these two knots, the granny and the square knot. What primes are they made of? Well, if we break them down the middle, we see that the granny is made of a trefoil and a trefoil. And if we break the square knot, we see it's made of a trefoil and a trefoil. Wait. Hang on, didn't I just say that two knots would always have the same sum, no matter where you stuck them together? Well, there is a subtle difference. In the granny knot, the two trefoils are identical. But in the square knot, one of the trefoils is the mirror image of the other. 
And so far, we haven't developed any tools that will let us distinguish a knot from its mirror image. But if you play around with a string long enough, you can convince yourself that they're really different knots. To distinguish them, we'll need a new invariant. So join me next time as we look at skein relations and the Jones polynomial. Thank you for watching. I hope to see you again soon.